welcome to Seeing Through Glass, welcome to Italy, more specifically Maranello, and more specifically than that, the Ferrari factory. Yes, I'm at the home of my favourite car maker in the entire world. And more exciting than just visiting this place, I'm here to collect a car. Yes, today I'm picking up a Ferrari Portofino M. Now, if you don't know, the Portofino M has received a whole load of sort of updates and upgrades over the original Portofino, something we're going to talk a lot more about later in the video. I'm actually going to be taking this car down to Ferrari's Finale Mondiale, the world finals of their Challenge Series. If you don't know what that is, essentially Ferrari owners get to race against other Ferrari owners in the Challenge Racing Series, which happens all over the world. Then at the end of the year, all those series come together to crown a world champion. But you also get the Heritage F1 cars, they have the XX program, sometimes they even reveal limited or, or rare new cars. It's basically Ferrari Mecca. And it's actually Shell who've invited me down there. I think you guys know I do a lot of work with Shell and recently I've even been looking at how they're developing their business to kind of handle the increase in electric vehicles. But like I've said many times on my podcast and I think as Shell realised, electric mobility may not be the only or final solution in making the transport industry green. So Shell are using their very long standing partnership with Ferrari and when I say long-standing I mean the very first Ferrari that came out of the factory here in Maranello had shell in the tank so yes they're using that partnership to research and develop cleaner greener more efficient fuels something else that we're going to talk a lot more about once we get down to Finale Mondiale let's hit the road To be honest, I'm not sure life gets much better than this. I'm in Italy, the sun is shining, and I'm driving a convertible Ferrari. And what a convertible Ferrari it is! Honestly, this Portofino M turned out to be a bit of a revelation. You all know I'm the biggest Ferrari fan there is. I would happily own any Ferrari. But the original Portofino probably wasn't that high up on my list in terms of Ferraris that I one day dream of owning. Probably because it wasn't really aimed at me. The original Portofino is an entry level car. It's supposed to be accessible, relatively easy to drive, giving you a sort of flavour of what the prancing horse has to offer. However, this Portofino M, I think, is full blooded Ferrari. So, what have they done to theoretically improve this car so much? Firstly, power increase. Only 20 horsepower compared to the old car, which doesn't sound huge, but actually does just make the car a little bit more urgent. We've also got the lovely eight-speed dual-clutch gearbox that I first experienced in the Roma. It is so good. The looks have been sharpened up ever so slightly. It just gives the car a bit more of a sort of purposeful presence on the road, I think. And then most importantly, and it, most, it might sound quite insignificant, we've got a race setting on the Manatino. And you might be like, yeah, who cares? Well, I care. Because on the original Portofino, you could, go, you could only go as high as Sport on the Manatino. It kind of felt like Ferrari was saying, welcome, 
but you're not quite ready for the full-blooded experience yet. Take it easy. But now, no, they've thrown that out the window. They said, right, if you want in on Ferrari, you gotta be all in, head first, straight into race mode. And it does just give this car a whole new character. Yes, you can cruise around. Yes, you can put the roof down, take in the sights, in comfort, in serenity almost. But you switch this thing into race and it takes on a whole new persona. And that's what maybe was missing for me personally, someone who likes full fat Coke versions of Ferrari. I like the Speciales, the Pistas, the TDFs, things like that. This has now got those elements. You know what, I'm headed right now to the world finals of the Challenge Race Series. I'm here with Shell, who developed the Scuderia Ferrari Formula One fuel alongside road car fuel. Did you know, for example, that it's basically 99% the same? What Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz put in their car it's fairly similar to what goes into this car. And so by having race, I feel so much more part of everything that I love about Ferrari. It's a true full-on experience and a fantastic one. So yes, being out here on a day like today, in the sunshine, on these beautiful roads, in a proper Italian prancing horse, makes me so happy. So right now, I'm headed down to Florence where I'm gonna be staying over the weekend because the Finale Mondiale event happens at Mugello, one of the most picturesque circuits in the world. So, I'm gonna crack on, enjoy these roads, enjoy this car, and I'll probably see you next at Mugello. tell you that this place was stunning. Welcome to Finale Mondiale at Mugello. And as you can hear and see, the Ferrari Formula One cars are out on track. My heart is racing so fast, so much excitement, so much adrenaline. But let's head down to the paddock, see what else is going on at this incredible event. I want to check out this weekend, but this was one of the first. It is the new 812 Competizione. It's my first time seeing one in the flesh. We also have the Aperta version here, the convertible 812 Competizione. These things look incredible. Obviously, hardcore, sort of track focused variant of the flagship front engined V12 Ferrari. This car I'm obsessed with because blue leather. Boys and girls, spec your Ferraris with blue leather interiors. But yeah, which would you have, Coupe or Aperta? Both of them absolutely stunning. This was another car that I was really excited to check out this weekend, the 296 GTB, the latest hybrid car from Ferrari. Got the SF90 next to it, the other hybrid car currently in the range. But yeah, this thing, oh my God, if I thought the 812 Competition only looked good, this is stunning. The proportions of it just really make sense. I thought it was gonna be bigger, but it's not, it's small it's compact it's got kind of like this kind of heritage historic looks it whilst also being super modern I would love to know what that's like to drive really exciting I think to see Ferrari pushing in hybrid technology there you go there's a bit of a rundown of the sort of stats not 100 kilometers an hour 2.9 seconds but the co2 emissions just 149 grams per kilometer so yeah very efficient very exciting a really cool thing to see I've just found Narnia. They're calling this the exhibition. It's a big hall right in the middle of the paddock and it seems to be filled with pretty much every Ferrari race car ever. I'm losing my mind. As cool and as exciting as those new road cars are, lots of you will know that my passion for anything car related started with motorsport and predominantly Formula One and my love of Ferrari really started with the Schumacher era and, and back over there they have pretty much every Schumacher Ferrari F1 car. <laughs> 
This is going to get ridiculous, but there's also the latest and greatest Le Mans 24 hour cars. There's some early Ferrari GT race cars. We're going to get a bit nerdy here. Sorry, but I can't help myself. There are so many incredible cars in here and I wish I could show them to you all, but I think the video would then become three hours long. So I'm going to kick things off here with the 1996 Ferrari Formula One car, Schumacher's first Ferrari F1 car. And what a weird looking thing it was. Look at those side pods. Uh, in 1998, the cars became a lot narrower. So can you see front on here, you get that kind of wider track. And then if we move to the 1998 cars, the cars are very, very narrow and these big old grooved tires. Moving on, we're now getting to some of the final Schumacher Ferrari Formula One cars. We have the F2004B and then the 248F1. And actually over here, this is the final Schumacher Ferrari Formula One car. I really, really sort of, I don't know why, uh, relate or connect with this car. Uh, I did go to a couple of Grand Prix in 2006, so I remember seeing this racing in the flesh, and it was when I was really getting into Formula One gaming, and you could race with this car on the PlayStation, so yeah, absolutely adore that thing. 2007, Kimi Raikkonen's championship winning car, and then 2008, very nearly a Massa championship winning car. Obviously lost out in that final race to Hamilton, but look at how complex the era was. If you think back to when we started in the sort of 96, 97, cars were quite sort of brick-like but here there's so many sort of appendages and wings and it was a real step forward in terms of aero towards the end of the naughty so yeah very cool looking car these are all the sort of Alonso and Vettel era Ferrari Formula 1 cars and they are massive I'm honestly finding it so exciting to be surrounded by such iconic and modern Ferrari Formula 1 cars but have you noticed how many of them actually I think all of them had really prominent shell logos on them it's so much more than just a stick on the car it's not just a sponsorship this is a real proper technical partnership and as Formula 1 sort of moves forward striving for sustainable fuels that partnership the Shell and Ferrari Formula 1 team partnership is going to be absolutely critical in helping to find a way to develop a cleaner greener fuel not just for Formula One but also for the road cars because all of this tech we've known it for years funneled down from Formula One to road cars and it's the same with the fuel so yeah super exciting seeing just gives you an idea of how long-standing and important this partnership has been The sun is now setting and the XX cars are doing their final few laps of the day. So I'm going to head back to Florence, uh, take advantage of this glorious weather, have a nice cruise back to the city. And then I'm going to be back at Mugello first thing tomorrow morning because I haven't mentioned it yet, but tomorrow Ferrari are unveiling a brand new car. It's, it's pretty exciting. So yes, oh, this is going to be a very nice drive back through the Tuscan Hills. I'll see you bright and early tomorrow. Listen to that sound. The hills are alive with V12s. Okay, here we are then, back at Mugello, and I am racing, I am rushing to the paddock to check out this new Ferrari. So here we go then, the Ferrari Daytona SP3, the latest in Ferrari's Icona series, following on from the Monza SP2 and the Monza SP1. This thing is full on nuts. Uh, where did the name come from? Let's start there. It's actually harking back to a 1967 race called the 24 Hours of Daytona, where Ferrari finished 
first, second, and third in a 330p3, p4, a 330p4, and a 412p. And actually, when you look at this car, if you look at those cars, you'll start to sort of notice styling inspiration at least. Um, but there's lots of sort of inspiration in this car from cars, sports cars, race cars of that era, especially the kind of rake, the way that the rear really sort of well pushes out. It's, it's a very <laughs> aggressive looking car, lots of functional aero. Actually, none of this car, ha this car doesn't have any sort of moving aero parts, it's all functional aero. So, all of these blades and wings and stuff are doing lots of work to push this car into the ground, and it needs to get pushed into the ground because it's insanely powerful. So, whilst the car is based on the sort of carbon, the same carbon tub as the LaFerrari, we've got a full naturally aspirated V12 engine from a well, it's basically the 812 competition engine, but sort of made lighter, made stronger, and more powerful. So, yeah, near as damn it, 900 horsepower, absolutely unbelievable. But the more you look at this car, the more things you notice. Look at these side skirts, absolutely insane in terms of their styling and detail, but also the doors, the way they kind of cut and scoop in. It's actually a bit Formula One car like, but it's also kind of reminding me of the Enzo. Uh, then the wing mirrors up here on the front wheel arches, that's because the doors open, sort of butterfly style, and look at the kind of curved glass canopy where the drivers sit. That really is reminiscent of P3, P4. Actually, if you come right down here, that's where you can see the car in its kind of most impressive form. It looks like an airplane. I mean, if that doesn't just cut through the air at insane speed, I don't know what will. But the thing is just amazing. And whilst Ferrari are pushing ahead in hybrid technology with the 296 GTB, the SF90, I just adore the fact that they are still doing this as well, celebrating the big old V12 naturally aspirated engine and their heritage and their history and their past. You know, that's something that Ferrari have to do because that's, you know, one of the reasons I love the brand is their history in the past and things like the Monza and now this Daytona just do that so, so well and allow, yeah, Ferraristi uh, like me or, you know, prancing horse obsessives to get really excited about the new and the old. So yes, let's hope we see these things on the road. Just 599 of them are going to be made. Uh, if you're wanting to know the price, then the car's not for you because firstly, they're all sold out and secondly, it's 2 million euros plus. <laughs> so yeah, it's a lot of money. I'm so pleased and grateful for getting to be one of the first few people in the world to see this thing in the flesh. So huge shout out to Shell for inviting me down here and of course Ferrari as well. What a beautiful thing. What do we think, people? I have to say, which I've said for basically all the cars that I've seen this weekend, much better in real life than in the photos. Really, really impressive. Super cool. Now, Ferrari always tend to finish off this event in style with a massive parade. So I'm going my way into the pit lane, I'm waiting for all of the cars, including that new Daytona, to make their way out of the garages and head out onto track. You can get Formula One cars that do donuts. They say the Daytona's going to do some kind of demonstration. I think even the historic P3, P4 is going to be coming out as well. It's going to be very exciting, and yes, the perfect way to finish off this incredible weekend. Wow, that Daytona looked so good on track or in the pit, at least off a stand. I cannot wait to see what it looks like on the road. But I hope we've done a good job at kind of explaining how important these two companies are to each other, Ferrari and Shell. Ferrari are constantly sort of pushing forward to build the best, the ultimate race and road cars. And Shell are there trying to create the most potent, the most efficient fuels to fuel those cars. And race by race, car by car, year by year, both of them are just pushing so hard, so far forward. And as the world of 
F1 and road cars continues to evolve, so do the fuels. And so I know I sort of bang on about Shell quite a lot, but it's because I generally find it interesting. Of course, my love of Ferrari, of Formula One, of road cars stems from an era where Shell logos were stamped all over Ferrari Formula One cars and still are today. So I just have this sort of natural synergy in my mind with the brand and of course with the beloved prancing horse. So I spend my life putting V-Power in my car and I'm sure lots of you do too. So kind of explaining what goes into creating that fuel and what's gonna go into creating fuels of the future, I think is important and useful. And yeah, I hope you found it interesting. So if you've enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and make sure you stay subscribed for plenty more videos to come.